we're in one of the rearing rooms within the insectary, and this is where we rear our um, Cudicordis biting midges uh, as vectors of blue tongue virus. The reason we raise these midges is to find out more about the transmission of blue tongue virus, which these midges can actually transmit to animals. Blue tongue is a, um, a notifiable disease, that means it's quite a serious disease, it's very easily transmitted, so it's easy to pass on because the midges can fly a long way. It also causes a significant mortality in some, in some sheep. We had a very large outbreak in um, Northern Europe in 2006, 7, 8. It was very economically damaging because you cannot move your animals away from the infected areas, from infected zones, from protection zones. And so you get a, a double impact. You get the direct effect of sick animals and some animals will die, but also you then can't move your animals and trade um, with uh, either internationally or within the country. Kilocordia's biting midges um, are capable of spreading important livestock diseases. So when they bite an animal, they can pick up a virus and then subsequently, um, when they've incubated that virus inside their bodies, after that period of time, can actually then pass on that virus to another individual animal. And by understanding the behavior of these insects, of what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, how they choose which animals they bite, how far they fly, we can build a picture of how the virus can be transmitted, so given from one animal to another by these insects. So behind me you can see um, the rearing pans. Culicordes typically um, breed in um, damp organic matter, so whether it's animal dung, leaf mould. And we represent this by having this uh, lovely concoction of liver powder and wheat germ uh, and seeded with bacteria that the larvae can breed in. We get our, our female midges to lay eggs on a bit of paper and then we put that bit of paper with those eggs on inside one of these pans and the eggs hatch and the larvae wriggle free and then as they grow um, they get bigger and bigger they're still very small. Culicordis biting midges are about two to four millimeters in length as adults the larvae aren't that much longer but they're very thin they look like tiny worms. When they're finished growing as, as larvae they then pupate so they become a pupae or chrysalis and Fortunately, that crystal floats, so we can actually raise the level of the water and collect all those pupae um, by a suction pump. So we put the pupae into these little cardboard pots from whence they can emerge, and we get about 500 individuals in one of these cardboard pots. In order to blood feed these insects, we use um, this hematech unit here uh, with heat, little heater units, if I can bring that to here. I want these to have a little reservoir of blood um, that fits over the, over the top of here, which heats it to 37 degrees. A little reservoir of blood that the midges can feed through a membrane, and um, so the adult midges are in these pots. So we can feed these on um, blood that has not got any virus, which we do for our rearing purposes, but also on um, blood from a, a sick animal and see if they pick up the virus, or we can mix a blood and virus um, mixture together and, and then feed that um, to the midges. Or we can actually interthoracically inoculate these midges, so actually inject the midges with a virus suspension using a very fine glass needle that's drawn out capillary tube, which we insert into the um, thorax just behind the wings or just behind the legs of the, the midge, inject a tiny amount of virus solution and then leave them to develop. And we know that Although these midges aren't very good at picking up virus, they're very good at transmitting it. So they're very good at passing it on. And even one bite from one single infected midge is enough to transmit, to pass on blue tongue into that animal and the animal may be sick. We can take our infected midges, um, we've infected in a restricted area in Plowright building, and we take them to the isolation units, and then we can place them on the, um, on the sheep, typically on the inner thigh, hold it there for a short period, and then the um, midges will feed through the mesh uh, and uh, contact the skin of the animal, and then pass on that virus. Conversely, when we have an infected animal, we can take naive insects from this lab into the isolation units, and then feed those um, naive insects on the sick animal and see how many um, midges actually will pick up that infection. Again, that varies um, with strain. So blue tongue was for a long time considered to be just a tropical disease um, and 
since 1998, we've had a few incursions into southern Europe. Then we had a significant outbreak in northern Europe in 2006, where the virus was being able to be passed on between livestock by our northern European midges. And that virus arrived in the UK in 2007. Fortunately, we were able to get a vaccine policy out and um, a vaccination rollout prevented that virus um, from expanding as it did in Northern Europe. In Northern Europe, it caused significant issues um, for the livestock industry, significant economic impact for the livestock industry. So the work we do here is, is about when these insects might arrive, what damage they might do. And by looking at the um, infection, by looking at the behaviour, we can understand how and why and when uh, blue tongue might get to the UK and the impact it might cause.